we've got our friend in here, a big media personality. You guys <laughs> may recognize her. But you are, I like television. how you have to put big there. Jenny Milkowski in the building. Thank you in for quotes. being here. Thank hey, you guys hey. for having me. You know what I respect about Jenny? What? what? She matched the color of our logo to mm -hmm. acclimate herself with everybody here with the dress. It's kind of like it. a street sign. <laughs> <laughs> like those flaggers. Well, you got the green light now because we're getting into everything. Awesome. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so let's get right into it. The allegations against Ryan Seacrest by his former personal stylist, they're serious. They include groping, fondling, inappropriate language, and she even accused him of pushing her head towards his crotch while she was tying his shoes. One would think Seacrest would probably address this issue on yesterday's Live with Kelly and Ryan. Not quite. Take a look. What is going on? Something, something, something is pretty happening. major is happening. <laughs> you know, that, uh, when we stand up, it means something. Something. Big. You know, I I was. You ever you watch the news? Sweetie, do you want me to put your shoes back on uh, for you? Right in the break. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> no, we can no I just, I just. I'm a mom. I can uh, do that. No, but no, no, it's okay. They, they, listen. <laughs> so this thing carries on to ultimately Ryan steps in front of the camera, stomps his shoes yeah. to get him in. It felt awkward to me, no? So, but I think it totally felt awkward watching it, but from Kelly Ripa's perspective, me watching her, she seemed like innocent about it. It didn't seem like she planned it or it was a dig. It just yeah. kind of slipped out. And like, that's how it's been presented, like it was a dig. I didn't get the vibe that it was Kelly throwing him under the no. bus in, in any means, right? No, I, I didn't feel that way at all. I think it was t t totally awkward. They should have addressed something I in some sense of the word. But because it, he know. did the first time around. When his allegations first surfaced, he felt the need to get in front of it and address it. He did on the show. This time around, the allegations got more serious, yeah. and he's pulled the brakes. He's saying, "Well, she's an actress, you guys. She's an actress." So, did you see what was it on? Uh, Sharon Osbourne was saying she accused the um, stylist of she did this, that she's cuckoo. Mm. Yes. You know, so, yeah. you know, and the allegations, they've been um, investigated. They've been kind of put to bed. So does he have to address it? No, maybe. I mean, it's, yeah. he's been I found. Just, I would love to be a fly on the wall for the backroom conversations because obviously the company, ABC Parent, Disney Parent Company, they had to talk about this and they had to decide how they were going to approach it. Of course, E! News had to talk about it, decide how they would approach it. So I would just love to hear what the backroom conversations look like. So clearly they decided not to say anything, yeah. say anything with Live at Kelly. But and like Ryan. dancing around it with the shoes I thought was weird. So we talked about this yesterday, Jenny. Yeah. Um, obviously, Ryan Seacrest will be on the red carpet for the Oscars. Right. And they're talking about certain publicists are having their talent boycott him and not talk to him on the red carpet. Do you think that's fair? This whole guilty until proven innocent thing? So he here's the thing. When you're um, in the public media, you are automatically seen guilty without even going through a trial or going through some sort of judicial process, which is unfair. So someone came out and accused me or you of something, mm -hmm. were immediately found guilty by the general public without going through the due process. He has gone through an investigation. They have found him that, you know, nothing happened. Yes. So he's cleared, yet we are still judging him on this. So, you know, we're choosing sides, but the law has chosen his side. Yeah. So. Yeah. so he should, he deserves some sort of, I don't, I think they're coming down too hard on him. I think we can yeah. all agree there. I mean, he'll be on the red carpet, but what, they're choosing the people that he gets to talk yeah. to. It'll so. be interesting to see how that whole thing plays out. All right, having a sex talk with your kids, it's every parent, trust me, it's their worst nightmare. <laughs> you feel awkward, they feel awkward. <laughs> they probably may know a little bit more than you at that point, whatever you have that no. conversation, it depends. Well, one couple in the UK is going to extremes. They put out a classified ad saying they're willing to pay up to $3,500 <laughs> for someone to talk <laughs> to their son about sex and masturbation. Does this seem like a cop-out? Is this bad parenting? Or is this a great business plan that people should take I, advantage of? I think it's a good idea. If you don't know, like not every, I think, parent knows how to have that conversation or even knows all the ins and outs. Things have changed, you know, every 10 years, <laughs> Sex has 20 evolved. years. Yeah. It is different in terms yeah. of, like, sexual health, how you have to talk about yeah. protecting yourself and the STDs that are out there. It's definitely different. But, like, at the ground floor, the, the basics. Like, the it's basics, the birds and the bees stuff. But what caught me off guard reading this article, the parents were, it was for their, like, seven and eight year old to me that seems so early that's where it starts seven i've got a 10 year old eight? son jenny that, that stuff happens and he's talking about seven. they're they're thinking about women at, at seven eight years old but they're asking questions about what's down there in their pants all that stuff happens but <laughs> it also said they would talk to uh the kids about foreplay masturbation that seems kind of that early. seems a little bit aggressive at that age yeah i mean if my son was doing that yeah, stuff we'd probably have to have a further it. conversation there's levels to it there is levels but i guess the baseline is would you guys employ somebody like this for 
your, let's say, 10-year-old? To avoid the awkwardness? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> 3500 Yeah. And I, I would also like... do it for $3,500. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 oh, I would totally do it. I think That's I would be really good at morning. talking. I think I would be really good at talking to children about sexual health yeah. and what they can expect and what they should do. But I, I think I can only imagine it would be awkward, but I do plan on having that conversation with my children. But I also went to Chicago Public Schools, and I feel like my elementary school and my high did school a did a really good job. I had about four or five years of sexual health of what to expect and what what you need to do to protect yourself. And that's and huge because I don't educators. remember anyone talking to me about it. Really? My mom, my dad, you just kind of, you know. You figured it out. Stumbled upon, yeah. You figured it out. Yeah. Jenny's doing okay. All my conversations ha with my parents happened in the car, so I'd be stuck and couldn't yeah. run away. She'd, uh, she'd get me in the car. That's she'd a good way to car. do it. Well, you're pay paying educators to do it in school, so I don't think yeah. this is very much different. It doesn't seem like that outlandish of an idea to well, me. Right, According to HerCampus.com, here are the signs of a toxic person that you need to get out of your life. <laughs> they are. They're judgmental. Yep. They feed off drama. Mm. They <laughs> gaslight you, which uh -uh. means when someone throws shade at you and claim they didn't do it, they only talk to you when they need something. Everybody knows mm. that person. And they flip-flop between positive and negative reinforcement. They really sing your praises one minute, then they knock you down, only to build you back up. It's like deal. signs of an abusive relationship. That's exactly yeah. what I like thought when I read it. Sometimes these people have it in their family. So, like, how do you get away from your family? Like, you can't, you're stuck there. Well, and I think a lot of people feel guilty because, you know, blood is thicker than water, so the saying goes. But sometimes mm -hmm. you have to. You have to let them go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's sad. What if it's your mom or your dad? No, self-preservation is everything. Like, to preserve your mental, your emotional, your own health, I think it's so important. And sometimes what they call it in church, they say, I will love you from afar. Yeah. You gotta <laughs> love people from afar, from an arm's length distance. And when That's you pick that it. time, I think you give them so many passes. And at some point, if it, if it is literally affecting your life negatively, you gotta pull that, you gotta pull that plug. And you realize that when you get older. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jenny, thank you very much, great Thanks, stuff. Guys. I think she did good enough to keep her around. Right? Yeah! Let's do it one more time! <laughs>